minister, he, is, he uses me a lot in giving people a word. And the young lady that was about to go, because she's in charge of the, the Sunday school, if you have somebody else that can take the kids in the meanwhile, that's fine, I have a word for her. And so I didn't want to call her back. Um, and I need to give her the word that God has given me. I just want to explain something very briefly to you. I'm not going to be teaching on the prophetic this morning. I'm sure your pastor might have covered that area with you. First Corinthians chapter 14 says that the prophecy is about edification, exhortation, and comfort. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see the, in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, we see the prophetic and we see word of wisdom and word of knowledge. But of wisdom is when God reveals parts of his mind to an individual about someone's future. Only parts. But of knowledge is when God reveals parts of his mind to someone, for someone, about what is happening in prison. Okay? So God uses me in that area um, a little bit. When you were busy playing on the keyboard, God should to me, I mean, the, the name that came into my mind was Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now, this is it's not going to be easy, but it will bless you. What is your name? Shabita? You're not yet married? Is that in your future? Like, you know, you're looking, at some point you believe you will get married? So this is about the future as well as what God is speaking to you about now. In Genesis chapter 19, God brings a promise to Abraham, and Sarah is in the tent listening. She says that she is going to bear a son in a year's in nine months' time, really. And Sarah doesn't believe it, she laughs. Okay? Here's the scripture that God wants for you. It's Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abram, a son in his old age, at the same time of which God has spoken to him. So what I want to speak over your life is that when you do get married and you have kids that you will have a son of promise because Isaac was a son of promise not only that he was a son of promise to Abram through whom God would use to bring multitudes of people you know that he had two sons Jacob and Esau out of Jacob we see the twelve tribes coming so Isaac was the son of promise and the Son of Promise can be real in your life in, in so far as the Son that you will get. That's what I'm speaking of here. But the Son of, son of Promise can also be God's Word in, 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 in a figurative sense. Promises that God has given us that He's going to fulfill even if we wait a long time for it. This scripture says God did for Sarah what He said He would. And so whatever promise it is, particular promise that you are holding on to that might have taken a long time. Hold on to it. Because God will do for you what He says He will. You might not have it yet. If you do, that's fine. But if it comes, you hold on to that promise. And here's the difficult part. Don't try and make it happen. What man's means. That's what Sarah did. And Ishmael was born. Don't do that. Just wait for God. And it might seem unreal or impossible. It might cause you to laugh because it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen because it's really not physically possible. But God will do what He said for you. So I speak of you that when you have children, you will have a son of promise that God will use to touch me. Thank 
So I just need to know uh, what time you must just give me five minutes before I need to end. Okay, just let me know because sometimes this part of my ministry can take a while and then I have to cut. Just be a bit brief on the word. Okay, the next person that I have a word for, and, and all of the people that I have a word for here, I have never met personally. Okay? I may have seen you, but I don't remember. I may have seen this young man, but I don't remember. But I definitely haven't seen this young man in the yellow t-shirt, in the yellow jersey. Okay, what is your name, sir? Quaker. Quaker. When you were worshipped in front of me, the thing that came straight into my spirit was giant. I thought, okay, in the Bible, giants are not well spoken of. But what God showed me about you is, he said, no, he's not the giant. But he's someone who's not scared to take on the giants. So your scripture that I want to give you, and I don't think Pastor John knows this. You know this, young man? Okay. So you can test the word. Is First Samuel chapter 17. Was he speaking about David? Man after God's own heart. He wasn't scared to take on the giant. From verse 38. We'll read. So Saul clothed David with his armor. And he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. They would fasten his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he, did, for he had not tested them. And he said, uh, and David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five small stones from the brook. He put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch which he had. The sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the man who bore the shield went before him. David looked about and the Philistine looked about saw David he disdained him for as only a youth, ruddy and good looking. So the Philistine said to David, I'm a dog that you come to be with sticks. The Philistine cursed David by his gods. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. This day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That's the scripture for you. You come in the name of the Lord God of hosts, Jehovah Sabbath. And so, I can expect from your accent that you're from Africa. Yes, I am too. I'm from South Africa. And I don't know how long you've been in this country, but you are here the giants. Now the way you're going to do this is don't try and do it in someone else's anointing, with someone else's vision and covering, in someone else's arm. You do it in the way that God showed you to do. You need to understand something that David and Saul's anointing were not the same. When Samuel anointed Saul, do you know what he used to anoint him with? A flask, a pitcher. It's a man made vessel. Because he was man's choice. God didn't want a king in Israel at the time, he wanted the prophet Samuel to lead them, but they wanted to be like the other nations. And so, a man made instrument for his anointing. But you know what God used to anoint David with? A man's oil. A man is a God-made vessel, not a man-made vessel. And 
So you need to walk in the anointing of God, not of man, not man's way, God's way. And then you stand strong against the day of change. And so people will know that you serve Jehovah Sabbath, the God of hosts, that there is a God amongst Christians, amongst these people. God has brought you all the way from Africa. Wherever God is going to you now, He is going to use you in this nation. You will be taken the time. Israel, 
And we are Israel today. We are the children of God. People who are seeking redemption within the house of God, amongst the people of God, that you will use a mightily Lord to bless those people. Amen. Then one more. Acts chapter 9. What I saw when, when, when you were busy playing the guitar, um, God just shows me, and I expect that Pastor Joel knows you well. Gentleness. For somebody who has a gentle spirit. Um, and God gave me the name Barnabas. Now, Barnabas means son of encouragement. Okay, so there's someone that is an encouragement and that will be quick to encourage someone rather than break them down. Now what happened here is with the Apostle Saul, he had just been converted but he had been persecuting the church and so he tries to join the disciples and they don't want him to join, they're afraid of him. And so Acts chapter 9 and verse 27 they do believe you as a disciple. says, But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road, and that he had spoken to him, and how he preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And because of that, they received him. And so that God will use you in your gentleness, in your humility, in your peaceableness, to encourage and to be of an encouragement and speak up for those who are being rejected by the believers, even by others within the fellowship. Maybe because of reputation. You see that you will look past God. God helps you to look past someone's reputation and see and know that you no, know, this somebody is somebody that God is using. It's just that these people don't know it, so let me just tell them. This is someone that is, is, is used of God. So that God will use you in that way, as a son of encouragement. To speak up for others who are rejected, who are being turned away. Other believers, even unbelievers, but other believers who are, who, who are rejected by, by their own fellow brothers and sisters. Is that okay? Amen. Okay. If you can go in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, so it's normally 12 o'clock? 
Five for hour 30. For the latest? Okay, that's fine. God has already spoken quite a bit through His Word this morning. So I'm going to just move fairly quickly. So read from verse 1. Therefore laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, for the Lord is gracious. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore it is also contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion the chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore to you believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the gold has rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stumbling block and a rock of offense. The main scripture verse is verse 5. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So the title of this message is A Spiritual House. That this house of Victory Center, or Victory Church, is a spiritual house that offers up spiritual sacrifices, not carnal sacrifices. That's why the scripture starts off laying aside all malice, all evil speaking, all deceit. When you interact with one another, you lay all that aside because you are coming to Him, the chief cornerstone. Right? Now, if you know anything about building, when they build any construction, houses especially, they have, they start by building a corner. In olden times, it used to be a big block that was a cornerstone. Today, they don't. They don't use a big block, but they use the same principle. They build walls at right angles. And they do it that way because from there, the whole structure is able to be built straight and properly. It gives direction to how the building is going to end up. Not start, it's the finished product. And so when you come to Jesus, you get direction of the fulfillment of what God has for you as a church and as individuals. Because Peter is writing this to the children of God. He's not writing it to the unbeliever. Which means that there is malice and deceit and evil speaking and enmity and fighting even amongst the people of God. I'm not saying it's amongst you, okay? I haven't spoken. I specifically spoke very little to Pastor Joel about ministry, especially ministry here. I intentionally did it and he might have thought, you know, this guy is not really, I know he, he's, a, he's a lovely person. But it, it might have been a question in his mind, how come I'm not curious more about the ministry here. I prefer to do that so that when I say things, people, the devil won't get a foothold and people think, oh, he's been speaking to the pastor. That's why he's saying these things, no. I want God to reveal things to me. I said God is dealing with certain issues, that's fine. But it's a spiritual house, and you saw the, 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 the illustration of the Holy Spirit. We have got to do things through the leading of the Holy Spirit, because He is the part of God. He is God here on earth. Jesus said, I won't leave you without a comforter. I'm going to the Father, but I'm going to leave the Spirit. The Spirit of Truth will lead you into all truth and will show you everything of the Father, John 14, and whatever is the Father is His mind. So He's going to show you everything that is of Jesus and of God. Now in Matthew chapter 16, there's a very interesting verse, a scripture, a portion of scripture, should I say. Jesus is with the disciples and He asks a question. He says, 
Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they say, oh, well, some say that you're Elijah. Some say that you're not a prophet. Some say this and that. He says, okay, but now who do you say that? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now others the anointed one, the Son of the living God. And he says, blessed are you, Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And on this I say to you, on this your name is Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. God is busy building His church on the rock of Jesus Christ, we know. But He's building, busy building His church on the rock of revelation that comes from God, not man. Because He said, who do men say that I am? And men had it wrong. He was not some prophet. He was not Elijah who was to come. He is the Christ. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So you need, as a Christian, to walk in the revelation that God gives you. In the world today, there are many philosophies. There are many doctrines, even within the church, that is not of God. So how do you know that, Pastor? You know I know? I check it against the Bible. That's all I know. And if I cannot find scripture to support what I see, then I don't accept it. I don't condemn it. I just say, sorry, that's not for me. Because I cannot find the Bible showing me that it's happening. And so my question to you is as you live your life as a Christian, the things that you do, the concepts and ideologies that you have accepted, that you might even be practicing or doing, is it God? Or is it some new thing that you've seen the world has brought in, even through the church? I did not mean that we were just trying to give this view as the senior part will leave us. What boys? There will be lots of opportunity to do what other ministers are doing that may be working well. We don't argue with success. But someone, the way God uses someone in, in their, their ministry, God may not choose the same way. I can guarantee you this, that if you do it the way God wants you to do, you will be successful. Okay? You say, well, what is success? Is it the church full of people? No. That's fine, that's just a byproduct. You know what success is? It's obeying the will of the Father. That's what success is. You show me a Christian who is successful, I'll show you a Christian that listens to his God and does what his God says. And so God says that you are a spiritual house being built up, right? To offer spiritual sacrifices. And so you as living stones are coming to Jesus. And so you know what's going to happen? It's going to be recognizable that you are different. You are different. Yes, you are not going to fit in. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Go quickly, very quickly, because I'm actually going to be anymore. Go quickly to Joshua. I want to show you this concept of different stones. Joshua, okay, very quickly. from verse 1. And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command him saying, 
Take for yourselves twelve stones from out of the earth, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. And Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had appointed from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe. Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it crossed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so, just as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones from the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord had spoken to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Then Joshua took up twelve stones in the midst, in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests, uh, sorry, he set up twelve stones, where the priests who bore the ark of the covenant stood, and they are there to this day. God says, take twelve stones. Now remember, this is the crossing. They've come out of, out of Egypt, out of slavery. They've come through the desert. And they now the Jordan has been parted. And they've got to cross over into the promised land. And God says, so that your generations after you. You see, that's why you have to do. You, you are a spiritual house. You're doing things spiritually. As led by the Holy Spirit. As the way God shows. Why? Because you have generations coming after you. That need to see that God worked in you. That this is something that God did. They would not have been around when the miracle happened. But you know what? Once you've gone, once that miracle is over, they will still be blessed that God worked miracles in you. He says when they come afterwards and they see these twelve stones, and they say, what is this for? Then you say, you know what you see? Those twelve stones, those rocks, God opened the Jordan for us and we walked on dry ground. A miracle, it's impossible to open the Jordan, it was in flood at the time. And so they'll look at those stones and they'll say, Ah, yes, we believe it. Well, that's not, why? Why should they believe it? Why should they be able to look at 12 stones and believe a miracle that they didn't see themselves? Why? Why? You know why? Because those stones had a distinctive look about them. Where did the stones come from? You can answer the question. Where did it come from? In the Jordan, yes, out of the Jordan. So it had been there for however long the Jordan was. What happens to stones when water flows over them over many years? Sorry? Has anybody ever taken a stone out of a river that's been there for many years? Have you ever taken it out? There's one thing that is very distinctive about it. What is it? It's smooth. It's smooth. A stone that comes out of a river is smooth. Compared to a stone that's just laying on the ground that's not in the river. You see where I'm going with this? <laughs> Before that river came, right? You know that the ground is just normal and then the rivers come through geography and geography students know how that works. Those are just normal stones with sharp edges, funny looking, all strange shapes. And then the river starts to fall and it starts to flow. And over years, years, over time, that water starts to wash away and work away the roughness of the stone. And it becomes smooth. And something about a smooth stone is very appealing. It's very nice to look at. Right? You built up a spiritual house, offering spiritual sacrifices. You need to stay in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Because water speaks of the Holy Spirit. You need to stay in the Word of God. Because water speaks of the Word of God. When you stay in the flow of the Spirit, He will work away the rough edges. 
You see, those stones, those 12 smooth rocks, they look different to all the other rocks around them. They were smooth and the other rocks were all different shapes, sizes, jagged, with points out of them, able to, to hurt somebody. But not the smooth stones. You could rub it, you could feel it, no problem. Sometimes we need to stay in the spirit because we still have some rough edges. And when we are not in the spirit or we don't have the word of God controlling us, then sometimes it can hurt someone, you know, and scratch somebody. They were different. But here's something else that I want to show you. Joshua took 12 stones from the ordinary stones and put them in the middle of Jordan. Check it. The Bible says, so Joshua took 12 stones and set it up in the middle of the Jordan. Why? Here's the other lesson for you as a church and as individuals. God wants you to get, you see, outside of your Christianity, outside of this ministry, you are living in a place, there are a lot of rough stones. They need to be taken and set up in the flow of the Lord, in the flow of the Holy Spirit. They need to come to Jesus. They need to get involved. If they believe in Jesus, the river of living waters will flow. They need to come to Jesus so that they can get into His flow, into His Spirit, under His Word. And God can also start working away the rough edges so that they will also become recognizable from other rough stones. And so this morning, what God wants you to know is that you are to be a spiritual boss. With Jesus as your focus, being led by the Holy Spirit, so that you can not only show that you are different, because you both show that you are different, but that you can make a difference so that others can also be recognizable they are children of God. Like just the process in the brain. Spiritual house. I'm just a messenger of God. And so I bring a message. When I bring a message, I do a multiple. And so it's up to you whether you will obey or not. I'm going to make this all perform. It won't be easy, but if you will obey, if you will respond to God, then God will change things in your life. If you are here and God has spoken to you and you have some rough edges on you, or you haven't been enough in the Word, or you want to get more into the Word and in the anointing under the move of the Holy Spirit, and you say, Lord, you know, you've been speaking to me about it. I've been putting things off. I'm just not, I'm not where I want to be. I want more. I want to make a difference and I want to show that I'm different and it hasn't been the case. But I want that to change right now. If that is you, I want you to get up and come forward. I want to pray for you. If that is you, you come forward. I want to pray for you. I know God has spoken to people. It doesn't matter if you don't come. That's okay. I'm just a messenger. I'm going to just lay hands on you and pray for you. I'd like you to just come over and move to my left. I want to make another call. While you are here. Okay, we have a team that is ministry, so I'm going to ask the team to come up. I just, I see some young ladies, so we have young ladies that can pray. Pastor Joel, if you have pastoral stuff, you want them to pray, that's fine. Okay, come more to my left, please. I want to make this other call. This is a really important call. If you are here, and you say, you know, I heard something like this, but I don't know the Jesus that he's talking about. I know, I've heard that I need to come to you. I know this message, but I don't know you. If you hear and you don't know Jesus, like I was, like these people are coming to you for change, but you don't know you, but this morning you want 
look and say, Jesus as your Savior. If that is you, I want you to come up if you hear you want Jesus. You have to together ask Jesus to be Lord of your life. To come into your heart and be your Savior. I would like you to come up and stand right here in front of me. I want to pray with you so that you can accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. I'm going to be standing over here I'm on the right of the group and to your left. That is you this morning. And I will be here. I'll just wait a while. If nobody comes, that's fine. But I don't want you to miss this. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Today, not tomorrow. Don't think, oh well, I've heard it. It's okay. I can come back next week and I'll, I'll think about it. Don't think about it. If that is you here, and God has spoken to you, don't worry about anyone else around you. This is a moment for you and God. Your life will never be the same. You will have eternity in heaven. But you need to respond. So I'm going to wait. If you want Jesus as your Savior, come. I'll wait for you if you've never received it.
Lord, we thank you, Jesus. For the presence of this place, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit's grace, God. Lord, let us come from this place. Let us continue to be with us. God, I pray that you bless us. Oh, yeah. I pray that you bless us. In Jesus' name, I pray that you bless us. Please stay back and join us for lunch. But if uh, you need to be strange, you still be great. Thank you.